Hello friends, welcome, welcome to this session again. So far we have discussed about various characteristics of the landscapes, categories of landscapes, especially the historical one. And just for your reference, I am again rerunning this particular slide in which just to get an idea that what the landscape styles would be or how would it be analyzed, it is by location which means country of uh, or origin, periods, duration, latitude, longitude that is geographic location, climate that is overall and the terrain that is the geomorphology whether it is hilly, flat, undulating. And again the next is socio-political history, the taste or the choice of the rulers. Then expressions, overall expressions, what people think about it, what people felt about it and how it has been expressed in the history. Then architecture, what is the kind of architecture that we have with a special or general. And then landscape character, general or special, elements and materials, all components and their materials. Now this, all this together it brings us to a situation when we are in a position to discuss various examples. Historical examples in this lecture series we have divided into two parts. One is oriental part, another is European part. In the oriental part we will be discussing about Spanish or Moorish, Chinese, Japanese and Mughal. And in the European parts we will be discussing about the Italian, French, English. So, it will come in different sequences. The first is just give me a minute. Yeah. So, now we discuss about various examples. In these examples, we will focus first on the oriental ones and then later on the European ones. In the oriental, we will discuss about Spanish or Moorish landscape, then Chinese landscape, then Japanese landscape and then Mughal landscape. And in the European ones, we will discuss about Italian, French and English landscape styles. Also at the end, we will discuss about how the current scenario of landscape styles are, means how it is being either being blended or it has been emulated. Okay, now, for the Spanish or Moorish. In the literature, quite often you might find this confusion that some, somebody is writing or somebody is referring this as a Spanish and some are referring as Moorish. So, you take it for granted that it is the same thing, same landscape style. So, the baseline information is now the location. It is Spain, Andalusia. In this, this location, the entire Moorish landscape got developed. The period is 705 AD to 1500 AD. The latitude is 36 degree to 43 degree north. And the longitude is 4 degree east to 9 degree west. This is the region. If you recall that when in the earlier discussion I said that when we are talking about the geographical location of this, it is basically a domain, a region which is guided by multiple such latitude longitudes that is why you have this variations 36 to 43, 4 to 4 east to 9 west that is how it is. The climate, the climate is Mediterranean in general and it is also arid in some parts of it. So, this makes it very interesting that at some parts it is very warm, very hot, very dry and in some parts it is Mediterranean climate. The terrain, in the terrain we have the valley zones excessively hot in summer ranges from 45 to 40 it goes up to 45 to 47 degrees Celsius that is very hot. It has a mixed rain. So, we have the Mediterranean belts at the lower regions and then ultimately the hills and cliffs. Vegetative coastal belt and river basins. So, these are all kind of terrain that you do have. Also we have hilly snow clad mountains at some regions that makes it very very varied. Now, what they have done is they have very intelligently 
taken advantage of both the situations, different climates and ultimately develop this particular landscape that we will see through our examples. But one good thing is about this particular area is they had sufficient amount of water because that is very much important for landscapes and if this hot arid then as you know through microclimatic study that if it is hot arid then water fountains or sprinklers or flowing water that makes a very good combination with the microclimatic equations so that they took the advantage of it. Then comes socio-political history. Originally it was inhabited by Moors and they were of Islamic faith. So, the first example that we do see in fact, we call this as one of the oldest kind of examples in Spain that is the Cordoba mosque and in this particular mosque they have very intelligently introduced a landscape concept which may not appear to you as a typical landscape, but the concepts or the philosophies are there. This particular area socio-politically were invaded, the Moors were invaded, Moors were driven out and there were lots of wars. Moors were driven out and the Christians they replaced this particular location and then what they have done is they have built, they have continued with it. What is the kind of expression that you have? Expression is in general introvert. The Islam, uh, this Spanish garden style is generally introvert. What is the architecture like? Symmetric individual spaces with non-axial layout. This is very interesting to note. Architecturally, as I said earlier that architecture and landscape they gets you know blended at different parts. In Spanish architecture, individual spaces are very geometric, very symmetrical, very modular. But as soon as you go on combining all these spaces, they become non-axial. So, this non-axiality brings lot of variety to the expression of architecture and then landscape blended with it also became uh, you know a very interesting outcome in this landscape styles. What is the landscape character then? It is blended with architecture as I said, it very much blends with architecture. In fact, landscape sits within the architectural spaces that is interesting, you will see through examples. Then elements and materials, okay, another thing let me explain. In this while blending with architecture, this I should mention, you know other than Cordoba mosque, the other examples like general life in Granada or Alhambra, they are generally placed on the hills, on the edge of the hills. What these Spanish people or the Moorish people they have done is, they have rather exploited the position of it. So, they are always placed the palaces and all that on the edges or at the top. And then the whole architectural thing that they have arranged in such a manner that from each of these spaces you can look outside. So, they always enjoyed the nature, bounty of nature which is surrounding the palaces, but inside they have created good landscape. Here this blending which they have done especially this blending is very interesting. They have exploited that okay, they should have the windows on the external surfaces and they would look beyond and see the hills, mirrors, fields and everything. When they are indoor, they have again landscapes which are not very extensively large in scale. So, here in this case you will find that in the Spanish ar landscape architecture, the scale of vegetations or scale of landscaping is quite very intimate. So, it is not grand, it is not very, very large, but it blended with architecture. What are the elements or materials? Elements or materials are like say water channels. Water they have used very, very intelligently and that is for essentially to create a microclimatic conditions which soothes in such kind of climates. Even if at the higher altitudes the temperature used to be Mediterranean, so the thing is the temperature had to be reduced. So, they had always the water channels that means the water is to run and they have also used fountains. What have we have seen through our research of other landscape styles is this particular kind of style have been used later by many. But hardly any people know that this was originally in their forte. Okay, so, water channels, fountains, vegetations. The landscape styles was through socio-political history, it was taste or the choice of the rulers. So, essentially what happened is in the locations where we had general life or Alhambra, the rulers they decided what will be where. So, socio-political it was the test or the choice or reflection of the test or the choice of the rulers. 
common people had no access to it and common people neither created this nor they have enjoyed it. Expression was overall in this case, architecture was very much special in this cases, the landscape character was very much special in this cases and elements and materials were various components in it. It was the varying urban silhouettes that they had, it was rich in palaces and gardens, it was also irregular building lights. Interestingly, all the buildings that is placed other than Cordoba Bosque, they were all having irregular building lines. It had dominated arch pattern in the architecture and it had shaded paths. This they have created, this shaded paths itself became a component in our landscape. So, if you look at the elements, let us focus at this. This is the kind of paths that they have created, shaded paths, this kind of spaces that they have created through shades. What they have done is, they have used low height trees to create shade, shading canopies and they also had the green shrubs at the base and creating this particular path. So, it was sheltering from the intense summer and it also had celebrating water. They created this kind of water bodies where they had the fountains and this is the area, the flowing water that always cooled the entire environment and small small spouts of the fountains, they used to you know break into small small droplets and that used to get the air temperature reduced. So, that is a kind of ambience that they had. So, they never had a very chilly or cool areas, but they had fairly cooler that particular zones. So, dribbling fountains offering a trickle of water for a feeling of relief from the heat, that is what is the kind of thing that they have created. They have also created enclosure in which these are small small fountains with an enclosure. That means, these enclosures which are here, they have created as small shrubs. If you watch these very carefully, you will find that they are landscaping in which the vegetation that they have used, they are very subdued. In Spanish landscape style, they did not use extensive vegetation. It is always subdued, low height, just enough. So, high wall gardens for protection and relief from other elements, external elements and then they created leaping outdoors. Basically, what they have done is all those indoor spaces flown out to the outdoors, but everything was introvert. If you recall that we have said it is introvert because see the whole structure was having the surrounding walls. In between they created small, small, small gardens or landscape courts and that looked inwardly. So, it converged. So, it is a well planned garden with mature trees and shades working as an energy saving alternative. So, this is where we personally feel especially through our research we are finding that wherever you are talking about landscaping, use of landscaping for microclimatic creation, probably the Spanish garden is the first pioneering one which has taught us this or given us such examples. Other elements. Tile works and iron works, they were the architectural parts that also blended with landscape because here the landscape and architecture they are almost side by side. So, it never became an independent entity that you look at the landscape or you look at the architecture, it almost became you know integral. And this is what is again the culture of today's landscape styles. In the current landscape styles, we are also doing the same thing, we are blending the architectural elements to such degree with artistic features or creative features which can be now blended with landscape. So, what happens is we in today's current scenario, we are trying to blend it in such a way that we fail to understand that when the architecture blended with landscape and lands or landscape got created with architecture. This is interesting and Spanish landscape taught us that. Then also they had different plantations with you know like with edibles like oranges. So, they had this kind of gardens. This brings us to the belief that all these idea of fruit orchards as a component of landscape, we have borrowed it from Spanish landscape because they have shown us this. In fact, in reality I will tell you Spanish landscape is the only one, where, only one where we have seen this has been very judiciously used. In other landscapes, they might have been some part somewhere, but they have never been really planned for. 
So if we really see all these aspects of landscape components then we have to believe that Spanish landscape is our pioneering one. That is why it is being discussed first. Then they have used the local material stones and other materials that they have used which they have used for paths and other things. Of course, these materials were used for buildings but the thing is for landscapes the pavements and all these things were done by this kind of local stones. So, whenever they use the stones and other local materials people felt at ease and they thought that is ok it is our place. So, basically what happens is this gives you know a kind of originality to any kind of landscape that they create. You know what we are even trying nowadays that whenever we are trying to take or use elements we are trying to do it in such a manner that we consider that this is our local materials not borrowed materials neither synthetic or not brought from somewhere else. So, this gives a kind of identity to that kind of landscape and then the finely textured paths these are the kind of examples that we do have. Let us go to an example the mosque of Abdul Rahman 1 at Cordoba. This is a very interesting example apparently this will not look like a landscape example no it will not but I'll, if I really elaborate then you will find how much respect they had for the nature. They were in fact you know limited or constrained with the development. So, all these areas were developed, but they created this mosque here in which they have saved the area. So, this is the perimeter a walled rectangle the dimension is 570 by 425 feet this is what is a mosque domain within which one third of the area they, they have reserved for the nature and the two third that they have used for their sanctuary. Now, this one third that they have reserved this one third is very methodically planned and very geometrically planned, but that should not give us an idea or we should not conclude from here that the Spanish garden is highly geometric no, because it was the first one that they have done and this is this particular example is being cited all over by the historians of landscape for the reason that where uh, an area where people are going to congregate they are going to come here they require shaded zones they cannot be covered or they cannot be sheltered in the entire structure. So, the idea was even if there are open spaces let there be shades. So, for which that they have created this one third of this area which is a you know garden of Naranjo that they have created. So, this is the area and where the trees are not very large and it is the height which is just above the human beings. So, what happens is when people come here for prayers weekly prayers or even daily prayers when they come here they have a shaded zone. So, it is nature after that they are entering into the structure. So, this concept is an excellent one or it is noteworthy and we should do it everywhere in which we have what you call as Pesho de lo naranzos that is coat of oranges. So, this is that orchards that they have created highly geometric no doubt about it, but it is green. So, it has two uh, purposes one is it shades provides shades to the people who are standing below another is it is also interjecting the solar radiation. The solar radiation is not falling on these surfaces. So, reflected radiation is now reduced. So, basically if you look at this picture again then what you will find is in this particular picture say about let me roughly say about 60 percent of the area is covered with a bush. So, the sun rays are being intercepted by this bush or the foliages and the lower portions remain shaded. The portion which is remain shaded does not get the solar radiation. So, there is no chance of heat being radiated back and the other portions which are they are also less significant compared to the other spaces. So, basically you can take this as a sort of you know a uh, sporadic green cover that reduces the reflected radiation makes a whole area cool because most often in this kind of plazas or you know pavements, uh, the problem of reflected radiation is more than the direct radiation. Now, direct radiation comes and it hits the surfaces and that reflected radiation now remains there for some time and just you know direct radiation hits your body and the reflected radiation makes the air temperature hotter and that makes it very very uncomfortable. So, this is what they have solved here. So, it is a grid of 98 orange trees planted here in rows. So, think about it in 18th century they have done it ok and designers perception of the transforming is a necessity to irrigation at the, and as an earthwork. What they have done you know 
in this particular landscape at the base they have created small small channels and those channels nowadays we are talking about drip irrigation. Of course, we have a pipe, we have a tap through which we can control the water. What they have done at that point of time is they had small narrow channels and those channels is to have a flow of water. That flow of water is to pass through the root structure or the root collar of every tree and when the water is to pass through this, uh, there is a gradual humidification or adding water to this or each of these plants. It is not flooding. Additionally, what happens is this water which is irrigating all the each and every plant because it goes touching each and every plant's base. Number one, number two is this channels having the water, you know it is also evaporating the water because of whatever solar radiation falls on this. So, whatever temperature ambient temperature that it has created it evaporates very quietly. So, this evaporation you know cools off the surface area up to a certain height and that generally matches with the human height. So, what happens is if you are there you find that okay, at in one place these channels are watering the trees at the same time it is also making a evaporative cooling effect for the human being that is the kind of thing which you have learned from this and nowadays people are using it. In fact, this particular concept has also been used in the Mughal garden I will explain to you later. If you look at this picture these are the small small channels which are you know flowing through like this it keeps on flowing in this this form and ultimately touches each and every plant here. So, this surfaces are being cooled automatically. In fact, in one of the examples that I have seen in Germany when I visited I found that in some places in the housing areas people have deliberately done it. It appeared to be very interesting and it was very encouraging that people have realized the uh, meaning of these kind of channels and I will show you the pictures later when it uh, we will discuss about those. The next example is the general life at Granada. It was built between 1302 to 1309 at that time. If you look at this the Granada the general life was placed on the edge of the hill. The idea was twofold one is have exposure to the visual exposure to the surrounding at the same time you have multiple such levels if you cut a so, uh, section through this. It was a summer residence it is just like as we do see in India uh, that in many places all those areas where they have hot summer regions. So, all the prime buildings are placed at the higher altitudes similar things that they have followed long back and in fact, we are emulating it. I am very happy to say that we are emulating it it is good it is a best practice that they have done. So, all summer residences are the higher altitudes and it is located on the high steep well watered slopes of the Cerro del. So, what used to happen is the snow plant mountains when it used to you know have a snow molten and that particular water is to come down to this level. So, naturally nobody had to raise the water up and then flow down which has been done in some other styles of landscape. Here the idea is okay, natural water is flowing down to this and when it is flowing down to this then naturally by the siphon effects all those fountains become active and this. So, you do not have to really energize the fountains for its spouting which we generally do in our modern day landscapes with pumps and motors there they use the gravity principle and they use it very very intelligently. These are to be learned this system that they have used if you really go into this in detail and start analyzing each and every aspects of this you will find that yes they were not technically as advanced as us today, but the thing is they have used the techniques and the science technology and the science available at that point of time and science is eternal. Okay. Then this particular site is folding along the edges down the mountains. So, they always enjoyed the surrounding landscapes. So, as I said earlier that whatever they have built first they became in introvert convergent, but they also never ignored or been deprived of the surrounding landscapes. This is one such picture in which you will see that this is down on the left hand side is down the hill and this is the place where the ruler used to stay or sit and behind this is the ladies area we call harem and this is the area where we have a channel of water which is flowing and they have a mosque on this sides and the higher altitude thing is on the right hand side. 
So it was traditional fascia garden and very sensitively placed along the contours. The central canal with the fountains that used to have the cooling effects and it had the ground you know uh, at this level and this used to use this is to be used as a ablution tanks for the mosques which are on the other side. So basically what happened is ablution tank was necessary. So they used the canal or say central canal for microclimatic reasons evaporative for evaporative cooling at the same time that works as an ablution tanks. This is how they have done it. If you look at the plan of this let me explain in this particular drawing here see this picture that you have seen just now this particular portion is here. Okay. This is the central canal and this is the mosque here and this particular portion which is C is the terrace that is landscape and then D is the casino that they have and F is the water steps. We have the water steps here I will explain this more and we have a picture of this as well. Now, the frontal portion is for the rulers and this is the portion which was for the essentially for ladies. So, as they had by their social custom the ladies used to be generally separated from the male members all the guests outsiders and all that. So, what they have done is they have created a male zone and they have created a female zone. I okay, will come to this further. Thank you.